So, um, a case that I saw breaking all over the place um, this past week and a half has been the case of Audrey Cunningham, um, an 11 year old girl from Livingston, Texas, um, which is right outside of Houston, right? It was Houston? Yes. Yeah. So. Polk, Polk County. Yeah. So, um, she disappeared the day after Valentine's Day. Um, she was supposedly being taken to school by a family friend, uh, but never made it to the bus. And apparently her family didn't know that went the whole day and she didn't come back home from the bus. And, um, they started going out and looking for her and couldn't find her. And an Amber alert was issued, I think around like 5 PM, um, that night. So, um, the last time she was seen was 7 AM and everyone was on the hunt, you know, looking for her and social media started popping off. Like the mother of this little girl, uh, we found out doesn't have custody of her and she was living with her father, grandparents, and a man named Don Stephen McDougal. This man, Don Stephen McDougal, is terrifying looking. <laughs> like he has Nazi tattoos all over him. Like I was trying to get closer images of his tattoos, um, trying to understand all of them. And there's many Nazi tattoos. Like everyone keeps pointing to the one on his shoulder, but he has other stuff on his chest that is like Nazi white supremacist stuff. Um, this man was living in a camper out back of her father and grandparents home where they lived together. And apparently the mother has had her own troubles, but the reason she wasn't taking care of her is because she couldn't, she didn't have enough money. She didn't have the means to. And the father and his family were pushing the mom out of the girl's life. Talking about how horrible of a person she was and all kinds of stuff to the daughter and keeping her away, uh, keeping her at arm's length. Well, the day before Audrey disappeared, Stephen McDougal starts messaging the mom and saying that he wants to set up a meeting and that your baby has been asking about you. Um, and she's like, like, this is weird and wrong. It's Valentine's Day. She posted all this on social media, you guys, on her own behest. She wanted to put it out there. Um, but yeah, he says he's never disrespected for her. Uh, your baby's been asking for you. And she's like, look, this is messed up. This is weird. Like, what is going on? What? She's been asking about me. And he's like, sweetie, I'm as straightforward as it comes. If I was just talking to you to try to mess with you, I would have tried. She said, touche, I give you that. Um, she asked me if I, he's saying that Audrey asked him if she, he ever talks to her mom. And um, if her mom is as bad as her father tells him, tells her that she is. Um, and Gosh, so, so sad. I know. Um, I told her that you're doing good and are fun to hang out with. Uh, she asked me yesterday going to school. So apparently this guy babysits and takes her to school regularly. Um, oh, no. yeah. Uh, she's not allowed by herself outside in the evening. They told her that you are in the woods waiting to take her apparently. Um, she's confused about the situation, but I told her that you are not hiding in the woods, but we talk. Um, what is wrong with him? Is he on drugs and he, and stressed that his mental health has him thinking I'm going to steal her in the night. I live in the woods behind his mom's house. Like it's a horrible situation. Uh, and he basically tr sets up. Okay. That he wants to meet her at this lake, okay, and 
tries to set this up and says, like, don't worry. Like, cause she's like really afraid. She's like, I don't want him to find out because then I I'm I won't ever get I won't ever get her back. You know what I mean? Like, this will look really bad if if you know we meet up and you know all this goes wrong. Um, and he said she says, I do not in any way need to be set up to lose my child even more. Lucky uh would lose it if he knew and is this what she asked you to do? I'm your daughter's favorite person and she will not tell is what he says. If I was the mom, I would be immediately so concerned. I'd probably call the cops. Yeah, I would call the cops immediately. Or what y'all maybe talked about for her to see me. She wants to meet you. I told her I'm on your team. I will do what I can. She Clearly, she's so desperate to see her daughter that she's like getting some kind of hope from this. And she's not reading the room, even though she feels weird about it. She's not understanding what's about to happen. Um, I think this is obvious. He's trying to set her up like if if set her up for the daughter to go missing. So yeah, that she gets blamed. so that she gets blamed for it. Mm, mm, mm. What doesn't make sense, though, OK, is that the next day. He never takes her to school. She never goes to the bus. And then he messages her. Have you seen her? Have you seen Audrey? So in the morning, he says, good morning. Uh, I hope I hear from her this morning. Please let her know if she changed her mind. It's okay. And then uh, later in the day, around 6.46 p.m., and that was early in the morning, uh, he says, hey, have you seen Audrey? I dropped her off at the bus and she didn't get on and hasn't gotten home. And she's like, no, Stephen, where the F is my kid? So if he was trying to set her up, like, why did he? Because they didn't meet. So a different avenue. Hmm. But I have lots of messages she's posted talking about the situation. Um, and there were so many people on Facebook after this started breaking of people coming out like this person, um, Carissa, saying, Stephen McDougal tried to R-word me when I was 10 years old. My parents were friends of his sisters. One night he came into my cousin's room where her and I were sleeping, ripped my cousin's clo my cousin off the bed and tried to assault me. I was 10 years old. I remember running as fast as I could and hiding in the living room and watching him look around for me until he finally just went to bed. He is not a man who should have been around any children, and I'm not the only victim. There are many people who have come forward talking about him. There's somebody who, a man who was at a party, and he, he, groped, he groped a married woman, and the husband got in a fight with him, the the two guys at the party kicked him out and then he came back with a knife and was pounding on the door, stabbing it. And they went out there and the guy had a gun and he hit him in the face with a gun. And Stephen got in trouble for that. Like he had a warrant out for his arrest for that. But this guy was he has a rap sheet like literally like 10 miles long. And he is a child predator and his charges show that. So why this man was allowed to live with a man who has a child and he was at a birthday party of one of Audrey's friend only like a week before this. <laughs> With how creepy this man looks and the fact that he has Nazi tattoos. Why is anybody letting this guy around their kids? He's no literally, he, he gaslights him, he manipulates him and he sweet talks him and some, for some reason they believe him. I mean, he needs to be the key suspect, so I hope he is. Oh, he's arrested. He's got capital murder charges. We because haven't even gotten this? to that. We haven't even gotten to that yet. Okay. This is like all throughout. She's missing. Nobody can find out what happened to her. People are saying he's a predator. Um, 
she tried to get him to let her talk to him. It makes me almost wonder if something didn't happen to Audrey that night. So he didn't end up going through with the plan to set the mom up because he couldn't help himself. Because I also have here um, that he was posting things to like swinger Facebook pages saying he's looking for a couple. Like he was literally on the prowl. Interesting. It's weird. On the prowl for what? Well, it, almost, it makes you wonder, like, was he trying to refrain from doing what his true desire was? Got it. And he, so he was looking for anything that was stimulating, like really sure. stimulating. So he's posting to Swinger, you know? Yeah, yeah. just something outside of what ordinary. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, that's what I kind of think was going on. But it almost makes me wonder if something happened to Audrey sooner than that morning. And that morning was just maybe dumping her um, because, unfortunately, Audrey was found. Um, you know, at first they found her backpack and it was um, near here. I have a map here um, of where her home was and um, where sh she was found and where they were searching. Throughout that time, there was... Um, it was Grizzy's uh, Hood News, right? That's her name, right? I think Remember? so. Remember? Um, she was out there, and there was other people out there, and they actually were talking about the backpack being found. They found a journal um, that said, send help, written on one of the pages. Oh, no. Uh, but some people are speculating that that was him trying to set something up yeah, Grizz with the mom. Grizzy hood news. Yep. yep. Grizzy's hood news. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> she, she was on scene boots on the ground a lot of the time, which was awesome. That is amazing. Um, okay. So it's Lake Livingston. Um, and here's the map. You guys will see it. Um, it was pretty far from her house. I thought it said somewhere here. It was like, it was several miles away. Yeah, I don't remember how many miles, but it's a it's a good distance. Like you had to drive there. Like and that was one of the first things we heard initially was they were looking for his car, which was like um an SUV type car. I have a picture of it. This one right here. Um so they put out the Amber Alert. They were like looking a for a 2003 dark blue Chevrolet. Um and that was his car. And there were also pictures of him like talking to the cops, pointing down to the river, and he was arrested for the other charge of the assault, but was the main suspect. So they got him detained pretty quickly based on other charges, Good. detained him, Great. and then they were out looking around this lake, around this area the whole time. And what we know now is that, okay, they found the backpack, they found those journals, and they found her ants on the riverbank um and they were wet and that they took sonar out there in the water um and they had cell phone pings they tracked him because of his cell phone pings and there were also spottings of him at a gas station um in that car there was also um him at an auto repair shop earlier in the morning where he was really dirty but they they narrowed his area down that morning based on his cell phone pings. And there's a ton of towers in this area. We just looked and found that out right before I, we hopped on here. Um, a whole bunch because it's right outside of the Houston area. So it's a ton. Like, I'm sure it was pretty precise mapping where yeah, he probably. was. Um, and they s took sonar out there. And um, apparently the guy who did it, um, who was the expert in the, the sonar, you know, stuff. Uh, he was on Nancy Grace's show and he, he lost, um, a child, unfortunately that was murdered. And now that's his life. That's his life. Um, you know, is doing sonar and, you know, water investigations like this. Um, he owns a company around it and mm -hmm. he said, 
it was so hard to find her. Like one minute she would be there and then one minute she wouldn't. And she was under the water and he had taken a rope and that rope had been seen only a couple days in his car when he got pulled over the same rope that he tied around her. When he got pulled over a few days before this, it was in his car and spotted by an officer. But he took that rope and a rock and he attached one into her and one into the rope and threw her in the water. Um, and apparently what the guy said, even though this is horrible to think about, that's the best thing he actually could have done for them to be able to find her. Because if he had not weighted her down, the current would have took her out so fast they would have never been able to find her. And she was down there swirling, so it was really hard for them to find her, like to see her with the sonar. Because one minute she'd be there, one minute sure. she wouldn't. But it's it's horribly tragic, and I can't help asking myself, like, why did this happen? Why was this guy on the streets? It reminds me of Davina Janeo. The guy that went to the mental hospital was let out and immediately went after her. Like literally only like a couple weeks after being out. Yeah. I mean. It's a similar situation where this guy has a rap sheet. He's assaulted kids. He's not. I I think that the father. The that father let too. The guy be around this. His child and uh, watch her and care for her in this way. Uh, needs to be held accountable. I, I agree. Think he needs to be uh, handed, um, you know, um, whatever murder, uh, like not conspirator, but um, negligence. It needs to be not just negligence. I no. think it needs to be worse than that. I think it needs to be. There's like uh, negligence. Can't they get him on like negligence and some kind of like manslaughter because of negligence? Um, like second degree or something? Yeah, probably. Probably. Something like that. I don't know exactly how the charges would work. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. Wednesday night, he was trying to sell his car. And I found his Facebook account, you guys. And he had posted tons of things he was trying to sell. This dude was about to skip town. And he was posting these before he ever committed the crime. He was planning this. He was clearly planning this. And this guy apparently has plenty of ties to the Aryan Brotherhood, okay? Meaning the dad probably does too. And I have a picture here. Look at that. That's the dad. That's Audrey's dad. And that's the guy, Stephen McDougal. They have matching headbands and bracelets. Oh, you can't see his bracelet in here. There's a bigger image where you can see the bracelet. FC. I wonder if that stands for some sort of like motorcycle motor. Yeah, I don't know. I'm yeah. not sure where this is taken. Yeah, I don't know. And either, but this is. They were all going on family vacations together. This guy wasn't like a big part of their family life. Like there's pictures of them literally traveling and going on vacations together. I, I'm just be I'm just gonna be fair here. If I had kids and I had somebody around my family that was like this engaged in this way, and they had a really weird tattoo that showed some kind of association with some gang, you know, my within the first day that I saw that ink, I would be doing a background check, a paid background check. Agreed. On. And then if I saw that there was uh, child type stuff around there, bye bye, bro. Yep. See ya. It would probably be ring ring, and then see ya. You know. Mm hmm. Because uh, you're not allowed to be around kids in that way. So, um, but this is awful. This is absolutely horrible. It's disgusting. Um, it's a shame. It's one of those situations that. Yeah, I think it could have been avoided. And I think the father needs charges. I They better charge the father. Um, oh, I think at this point they could charge the grandparents too. Because I'm pretty sure the grandparents are the ones who actually had custody of her, not the father. Yeah. They Everyone all should in be that charged. household should be. I agree. Yeah. I agree. And I've heard there's many criminals actually who were living at this house, not just him. Mm hmm. So I, I don't know all that's truth and what's rumor or not, but he had a charge for enticing a child. Okay. He did two years and did not have to 
register as an offender, a sex offender. And this is a situation that he was grooming a child. There's a situation where he got in the bed and took off her pajamas. Like he has literally assaulted children, many children. Yeah. And is not registered as a sex offender and has not been held accountable in the way that he should. And his rap sheet, I'll have to put a picture of it up here for you guys because I'm not going to read off all the charges, but it's going back as far as the 90s to now, and it's long. Mm. It is a very long. Like, this guy is a menace to society. Look at that. Mm. Yeah. That is so long. It is. And it's so many things. Yeah. It and is. That's crazy. And it's really sad. It's really unfortunate. And it was really preventable. So many DUIs, so many resisting and avoiding arrest, uh, family uh, violence and stuff, assault, like the child stuff, so many things. He's literally a menace and a predator. Mm -hmm. And he should have never been anywhere near this little girl. Yeah, I You know, agree. I don't know what was going on with the mom exactly. All I know is that whoever put this child into those people's custody also has some accountability here. Yeah, somebody like, he didn't do the proper checks. No. Not at all. And you know what's another one weird thing I want to mention real quick is on what he has like six different Facebook accounts, you guys. Like he doesn't just have one like a, or two flag. like a normal person. He has a ton of them. Red and they're flag. all legitimate from what I see. <laughs> well, he posted this picture in June 2018 saying a man is missing in his wife when his wife last saw him and asking like for people to be on the lookout and posting family pictures of them and they have three little girls and a little boy. He was involved in a missing persons case with children? Like what? It almost makes me question, did he do something to this guy so that he could be with the wife and the kids have and help access. them out, have yeah. access to them? I don't know, man. Like, I just don't know what this guy it's is so willing to do. It's disturbing and gross. It's so hard to think about. These, these cases are really hard to think about, like the details of the crime and situation and stuff like that. It was really hard listening to um, the people who came on Nancy Grace's recent episode about this. Um, who were involved in this case. Um, it, I don't want to get into the graphic details like like she mm -hmm. likes to do because I don't feel like that's beneficial here. I think the real, what really matters is trying to prevent this in the future. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. the fact that she had this guy living in her home, who knows, this was probably prolonged abuse. Okay, it probably wasn't just that day. It was probably prolonged. And the fact that somebody put her in those people's custody. I don't know what was going on with her mom, but it sounds like she would have been safer with her mom, even yeah. if she had less food to eat. Yep. Better alive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like her mom clearly cares about her. Her mom is like destroyed by this. Of course. Like imagine not being able to take care of her, her living with these people. And, and now she's gone. You don't get another chance. Yeah. And all Sad. because this guy wasn't registered the way he should have been for one. I don't care. You mess with a child once you go on a sex offender list. I agree. Period. It I shouldn't agree. matter what plea agreement. It, none of that should even be available to you to plea out of being registered. If you did something to a child. Yeah. I don't know. It's gross. Um, I think there, this clearly there needs to be something done to try to prevent this in the future, whether it's a harmony's law. I know it's hard. Like the child's gone. You'd rather have her here than have a law named after her, but we don't want something like this to happen again. And that's in Dav Davina Janeo's situation in New Jersey. There was a string of killings like that where guys got out committed these acts um, 
And and that's why the sex offender registry is what it is today. Yeah. Well, clearly there needs to be some more improvements. Um, For me, that's not even the biggest deal. The biggest deal was the, the parent too. For her. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And the school, you know, didn't even notify that she wasn't there that morning. They didn't notify it till like way later in the day. If I can find the single point that would have prevented everything, it's not the sex offenders list. It's not the school. It's the parents allowing shady people around this child. Yeah, but what can be done about that? What do you mean? They do not allow these types of people around a child. Yeah, I know that. Therefore, they need charges. Like, I call for charges for all of them. I agree. Yeah, the parents absolutely because should be charged. if the people that were caring for her would have kept criminals away, shady characters, looked into the background of people, and, and made sure this child's surroundings were safe and secure and trustworthy, guess what? None of the other things would have mattered. The, the sex offender list, yes, it all needs work. Absolutely, 100%. Um, but this is preventable regardless of whatever the state failed on that guy or not, if they would have managed this child like a respectable, you know, guardian should have. You're absolutely right. And I, I, I feel the same way. I thought I originally felt like I don't understand why the dad isn't being charged. I don't understand why the people who allowed this man in their home aren't being charged. Like it's totally your fault. Like along with his, like, you know what I mean? You're essentially an accomplice. You let a child predator criminal who has Nazi tattoos all over him in your house and allowed him to be her caretaker. I'm so curious what the connections are, like why he was there, you know, how many other people were, are they all a part of, a, you know, a skinhead gang or an Aryan brotherhood? Like, are they all a part of that? And that's why? I don't know either. Um, but this case was rough to listen to. I followed it from the beginning until she was found and all this was found out. Um, you know, I hope that she gets real justice and the people who all are should be held accountable are. Um, but I want to know what you guys think about it. And yeah, that's it.